Today we're going to talk about monetary policy and the interest rate. We'll talk about how the Federal Reserve influences interest rates, why they try and influence interest rates, and uh, get a sense for how we can begin to merge two different models together that we've looked at, both the money market and the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, and see how they kind of uh, work together. So uh, what you should get out of this, you should have a better idea about how the Fed uses monetary policy to affect aggregate output. You should be able to describe how monetary policy is used to uh, stabilize an economy. And we'll talk a little bit about this idea of money neutrality and what that means. And we'll look at long-run effects of monetary policy um, on the market. And you'll find all this information in Chapter 31, Monetary Policy, pages 837 to 847. So when we talk about monetary policy, we're talking about the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve is, uh, is tasked with keeping inflation low and unemployment low. And they're going to try and do that through manipulating the interest rates. So the Federal Reserve is responsible for setting a target federal funds rate. They determine what the, they want the fund rate to be. And then they'll take actions through the Federal Open Market Committee to try and make sure that the market rate is the rate that they've set as the target. And so um, let's take an example and we'll see how they do that. Let's assume that the Federal Reserve wants to set a target federal funds rate that is above the current rate in the money market. So if we look at the money market, we see that equilibrium is where money supply and money demand uh, intersect at point E on the graph. And if the Federal Reserve wants to set a fund rate that is above that point, they're going to have to go ahead and change money supply, and they're going to do that by um, using the open market operations. So they're either going to buy or sell T-bills. In this case, they're going to sell T-bills. By selling T-bills, they, um, they will send the T-bills to the bank, and they'll take money from the bank and take it out of money supply. It'll shift money supply to the left, and we'll get a new equilibrium point, which is point E prime. And so when, at point E prime, we now have a higher interest rate than we did before, and we're now at the target rate that the Federal Reserve had set. And so when you do that, there is then an impact on the um, aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. And so let's just take a look at that. So um, we're at the point where we see that open market operations will have an influence on interest rates, and interest rates will then have an influence on aggregate demand. Uh, before we get into the equation or into the example, let's remind ourselves that with a change in interest rate, we will see a change in investment. If interest rates go up, there should be less investment because the cost of investing has gone up. Uh, the price of money, the price of borrowing has gone up, and so some investment projects that you might have invested in are no longer viable because the uh, return on investment is lower than the new interest rate if it were to go up. And if interest rates went down, then we should expect more investment and more consumption, both of which as part of the uh, equation for GDP should cause aggregate demand um, to shift. So let's take a look at this example where the economy is in a recessionary gap where there's potential output or full employment output and we have current output and that is less than potential. So we have a recessionary gap. If that's the case, the Federal Reserve would want to increase aggregate demand through um, more investment, more consumption, which means that they would be looking for a lower interest rate. So the Federal Reserve may choose to try and lower the interest rate, and they can do that through the open market operations. And um, in order to do that, they would begin to buy treasuries from the banks. So the Fed would go and buy treasuries. They would give the banks money, take the treasuries away from the banks, and that would cause a new money supply curve out to the right, which would lower interest rates. Those lower interest rates affect investment and consumption. And with investment and consumption increasing with the lower interest rates, we should see aggregate demand shift to the right, and that's what we see. And so the Federal Reserve, through its manipulation of monetary policy and the setting of, uh, of a target federal funds rate and then the purchase and sale of T-bills will impact not just the interest rate, but also will have an impact on the overall economy by moving aggregate demand and getting out of the recessionary gap that we saw in the example. There are some limitations to monetary policy, though, that you need to keep in mind. Um, the most important thing here is to think about what would happen if the economy were in equilibrium? I mean, if we can grow the economy um, in the short run through 
monetary policy like we did to get out of the recessionary gap, why don't we just do it again uh, if we're at equilibrium and cause the economy to grow? And what we find is that that thinking doesn't work. So just like when we looked at fiscal policy and we said that um, the economy generally self-adjusts, the reality is that even with monetary policy, the economy self-adjusts. And so um, All right, technology being what it was, we were able to pause and, um, and we'll just pick right up. Um, if we look at this market in, in long run equilibrium and we said that we were the Federal Reserve and we might want to try and use monetary policy to grow the economy, we could do what we did before and um, the Fed could buy treasury bonds from banks and that would cause a reduction in interest rates and that would cause the aggregate demand to shift to the right and we could do that and that would be fine in the short run but what we would see then is in this new situation where we have a new price level higher than before and a new output higher than before that the increase in price levels means that um, with an increase in prices not only for consumers it's an increase in price levels for suppliers the profit per unit for suppliers is going to go down with this new higher price level um, because they have to pay higher wages for their employees and as a result short run aggregate supply will shift back to the left and we end up with a, uh, a new price level higher than either of the two price levels previous but at the same original potential output that we were at before and so despite being able to grow the economy in the short run through monetary policy it is not true um, that you can grow it in the long run strictly through monetary policy just like with fiscal policy you can fix it in the short run but you can't go beyond potential output for long periods of time because of the self-adjusting nature of the economy so what we get out of this is an idea of the neutrality of money which tells us that a change in money supply has no real effect in the long run that the really the only effect of changing money supply is that you will cause price levels to go up and the increase in price levels um, will be equal to the change in uh, money supply so if we increase money supply and we lower interest rates then um, we saw that that shifted aggregate demand to the right and that caused a rise in overall prices and we know that in the long run if there's a rise in overall prices then people are going to need more money to be able to buy the same amount of goods which means that the money demand curve will shift to the right and end up back at the original interest rate that we had started at so in the long run money supply uh, changes can grow the economy in the short run but in the long run we go back to our potential output but at the higher price level so if I increase money supply by 10 percent I'm going to expect aggregate price levels in the long run to go up by 10 percent but the output itself will remain the same and that's what we mean by money being neutral So for the rest of uh, class when you come in, we're going to go ahead and work on some practice problems, and uh, I look forward to seeing you then.